We're going to go ahead and take questions and have people with microphones. You can ask any question you like, and we'll try to answer some questions before we wrap up uh, this evening. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, I use Ancestry.com. Am I opening myself up to a lot of things there? Uh, yes, and you also need to make sure that you're using a legitimate company. There are a lot of uh, companies that use very similar names, very similar uh, URLs, and they tell you that they're that company, and, uh, and they're selling the service at a lot less than the actual real companies are selling them for. And the real purpose is to get all that data that you're going to give them and information you're going to give them. So if you're going to do that, make sure that you're dealing. They didn't solicit you. You went out, looked them up, and you dealt directly with the company. So be careful of those types of sites. Yes. What's the future for fraud and scams? Yeah, the future is pretty scary because um, what, what the problem is, is up until this point, cyber crimes have to deal with stealing money and stealing data and information. They're financial crimes. But we have the ability now to shut someone's pacemaker off, but we have to be in 35 feet of them. So if we walk up behind them, we're within the 35 feet, we can shut their pacemaker off, we can speed it up or any bodily device that they use that's on their body controlled by a chip or a computer. My concern is that in a few years, you'd be able to do that from 100 miles away, 500 miles away, 5,000 miles away, which then that would become a tool for assassination. We have the ability now to be chasing a vehicle down the interstate, but we have to get within 35. These are technologies we are testing right now. We have to get within 35 feet of the, the vehicle, and we can shut the engine off, turn the airbag on, lock the car doors, lock the windows so they can't roll them down, and commandeer the car through the computer devices that are in that vehicle. But we have to be within 35 feet of the vehicle. I believe within five years, you'd be able to do that from 100 miles away or 50 miles away or thousands of miles away. So you can imagine going down an interstate at 85 and then someone turned the airbag on from somewhere else. So I think that cyber is going to turn a lot blacker. It's going to become a tool of assassination. It's going to become a tool of certainly taking over the electrical grid, the banking system, more of a terrorist tool. Uh, and certainly, if we don't do anything to start upgrading our systems, you know, we've talked about the electrical grid for 20 years. We haven't come any further today than we were 20 years ago about protecting our dams, our electrical grids, and things of that nature. So again, like hackers, they're looking for weak points, testing those weak points, and uh, deciding what they can and can't do. When they were in Equifax, they were in Equifax for almost a month before they actually stole the data. They were searching everything to see what is here to steal, what's of value here, before they ever acted and stole it. And that can go on in any type of breach or hack. So I think we have to think about all of that, and we have to start doing a better job of protecting her. We will have some very serious issues, because technology only makes it easier for criminals and allows them to commit crimes from far distances away, which makes it very difficult to apprehend, prosecute, uh, those individuals, especially in countries like Russia and China and places of that nature. Yes, got one right back there. My question uh, deals with a uh, key card, a room card for a hotel or motel. What yeah. information is there and on those cards, do you know? Nothing. That's a very kind of wives' tale that started many years ago, and the reason for the wives' tale is that the back of the key card has a magnetic strip. In the magnetic strip are three lines of piece of information. On the back of your credit card is a magnetic strip, and it's capable of three lines of information. So people think that the information on the back of that is information about you. The only information in the magnetic strip is the key combination to the lock, so that when you put it in there, it unlocks that electric lock in your hotel room. There is no personal data about you on that card. So in the hands of somebody else, it's worthless because the locks automatically change when you check out. They re-eject to a new number. And when they program a new card in, it is a whole set of new numbers that go on the magnetic strip to open that, that door. So you don't need to worry about those cards. But that was a rumor that started. But we've never, ever heard uh, that that had ever been, has ever been done. Yes. On your slide that referenced the Internet of Things, you had home security systems noted there. What are the dangers of using such a system? And if we are contemplating purchase of such a system, what do we need to look for specifically with home security slash cameras? You want to you wanna ask, you know, we buy things a lot of times based on price. So um, I have a, a number of security cameras around my house because of the nature of my work. And I did when my kids were little. And my home in Oklahoma I had 13 security cameras around uh, my home. I have four or five around my home today, but they're encrypted. 
so that nobody can access through them to take control of them or see with them or do anything with them. So when you buy those cameras, you need to ask that same question of the person who's selling you the camera, what software or technology do you have to keep somebody from taking and looking through my camera and seeing my property or using that camera uh, against me? And if they can't answer that question or they try to tell you that doesn't happen, uh, then you need to find somebody, somebody else. Uh, yes. Is my ATM card as vulnerable as the debit card? Should I avoid using my ATM card, just like my, uh, you say to avoid using a debit card? You know, I don't use, uh, you know, I'm a little different. And when the bank gives me an ATM card, I, I just destroy it. Because if I want to get cash out of a, a machine, now keep in mind I'm not getting $20 or $30 because I'm traveling all the time. I might get $200. I'm using my credit card. Now, the credit card company is going to charge me a fee for using the card, but the fee is worth me not having to uh, worry about someone accessing my bank account or giving my information. So, um, you know, if you have to use a debit card, you can set a limit on the debit card that if you give a child a debit card, it can't be used for over this amount, so that much money is in that account to cover that debit card. In the same way with an ATM, you can uh, stress the limit that, of that ATM that what withdrawals can be made on it. Uh, but I use my credit card when I go. Everything is about to change in the next couple years. So when you have an opportunity uh, and you get home, uh, if you can remember, just Google the word Trusona. That's T-R-U-S-O-N-A. That's a new technology that is going to do away with passwords. So in the next 24 months or so, passwords are going to disappear. There will be no passwords. Uh, passwords are stagnant. They're the root cause of all the problems we have. So we have finally developed technology to do away with the use of a password. So I was seeing that demonstrated yesterday uh, at a Bank of America in a demonstration where when you went up to the ATM machine, you took out your iPhone, you entered in your passcode, your code for your phone, or you put your thumbprint down, and then you just held it to the screen, and there's an OCR code on there, and it takes it and knows it's you. But it's a very sophisticated encrypted code, and it knows it's you. So I don't have to sit there and enter my uh, PIN number. If you want to watch Netflix, you would just pick up your phone and hold it up to the screen in your house, and you're into Netflix. You don't have to type in anything or enter any. Thing. So when you go to that website, there is demos of it and how it works off your phone. So I think what's going to happen eventually, we'll move to that technology, we'll eliminate passwords, and then you won't use a social security number. So when I go in and open a bank account or I go to a hospital or whatever it is, I will use my phone to authenticate who I am, and I don't have to give them my uh, social security number. They'll know uh, that it's me. So it's I would go into hours talking about technology, but you can go to the phone and just look uh, to your uh, website and just go to TrueSona and read about that. Yes. Okay, what should I do when um, I've received an email from, it, it appears to be Wells Fargo, and it's saying that I welcome to your new account, online account, and there's um, a, a credit limit of like $5,000. Don't, don't open it. You, you know, if you didn't solicit the email, they're just sending you an email. You didn't solicit it. Uh, don't open it. All they're trying to do is get you to open that link. They want you to click on to that link. Whatever it is they're telling you or they're selling you or you won or whatever it is, it's all about getting you to click on to there. So if it's something you're interested in, that's where we stop, verify. I simply pick up the phone, call Bank of America, said I just got this email. This is where the email came from. And it says this, and they'll tell you, oh, we didn't send that email. That's not from us. Uh, don't, don't click on that link. So just stop for a minute and verify it. If you're in doubt about anything, it's much better than you finding out later that you clicked that link and ended up getting malware or ransomware onto your uh, computer. Uh, by just opening the email, have I done anything? Um, if you did, I would, again, to be assured that it was legitimate, I would call the bank and ask them you can, if that email was an email they sent. If they said it was and that it was totally legitimate, then you don't have anything to worry about. If they said they didn't send it to you, then you want to make sure that you don't have any malware or anything on your computer. And that's where you want to call out a, a tech, a local tech company with Best Buy, whoever it is, to come and look at your computer and make sure there is no malware or, so, or anything on your uh, computer. Thank you. Yes, so uh, okay, I mean, who you got one back there? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Um, I have um, recently, in the last couple of years, lost my husband. He was a military Vietnam War veteran who had 
very high security clearances. I have called Social Security to shut down his Social Security number, called the Department of Motor Vehicles to shut down his driver's license information. Um, I've called voter registration, and I've called all the um, credit bureaus, and we do belong to LifeLock, or he did, but they said they can't do anything with his information to lock it down. Is there anything else I should be doing? Uh, no, I think you really covered it. You, you were very proactive. You did what you were supposed to do, and, and uh, I think that's all you can do. There's always risks, but I think you eliminated a great deal of the risk, and you protected that information the best you can with what's available for you to, to do today. You notified the right agencies, and you took the necessary steps, and that's about the best uh, you can do. Do I need to do anything with the Department of Veterans Affairs? Because I haven't... Uh, it, given them any information. It wouldn't hurt. You could, and they'll let you know if they would take that information and how they take it. So you could call them and explain it to them, and they could walk you through that and tell you, or they'll tell you they don't take that information. But it's worth making the uh, the phone okay. call. Okay. Thank you. All right. Real quick, sir, because I know you're very anxious. I got to go. But go ahead. How secure is things like TD Ameritrade or online brokers? Well. Everything comes down to how secure is the company. So it's like when people say to me, hey, Vimo, um, what about this? They said they'll keep a record of all my, so my uh, passwords, and I don't have to remember them all. They'll keep a record of them. They'll keep a record of my credit card company. My question is always who? Who said that? Who's this company? Is this four guys in a warehouse room? Or is this some multi-billion dollar company that told you that? So there's always going to be risk, but if you're with a legitimate company that has invested money in protecting the data that's been given to them like they would be at TD Bank, banks spend billions of dollars on technology every year to make sure that they keep their systems updated as, as much as they can, uh, I think it's pretty safe. So the hacker is looking for the weak systems, not for the strong systems. So uh, if a hacker's out there, he's not, he's going to might attempt to get to TD Bank, but once he knows they can't get in there, they're going to go look for a weak point somewhere else. So I would say uh, it's probably pretty safe, and as long as that company keeps those things safe. Been a pleasure spending time with you. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Have a great night.